Gotcha. Beginning. Um, but yeah, I guess um, we were just kind of talking about what you've been going through a little bit. So you feel like you're like um, like out of it? Or I mean, it's like a daily thing, right? Yeah, I mean, it, depression is something that um, you, you it, it's, it, I don't want to say it comes in waves. Um, but it's something that's there. I mean, I don't know if you ever fully get better from it. There's good days, there's bad days. Um, I think part of, you know, doing the therapy, uh, taking medication, uh, exercise, and, and then having friends that hold me accountable and I talk to, and, um, and then even spiritually, people what, that I, you know, get biblical counseling from and talk to, it's it's kind of all of those. It's not something I can just you know pray, say a prayer, and get over it and move on. Um, I think that that's you know if you look at the if you read the New Testament, most of the New Testament is written to people who uh, are experiencing intense suffering. Um, the, the Christian life is 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 not one of trust Jesus and everything will be fine. It's mm-hmm. we trust Jesus and we recognize that this world is broken and, and there's going to be hard things that we're going to face and deal with, you right. know. Um, some things, you know, and, and, and listen, I, I don't, I know there's a raging debate about whether or not, you know, how much is chemical, physical, or just, you know, mental. Um, but I, I really have, I really have bought into the idea that um, we have this inner monologue that's going on inside our, our heads. And um, it, Oftentimes we think what we say to ourselves is us. Mm-hmm. It's not, mm-hmm. and and we have to learn that those are things that we have to control uh, and, and not let it control us. Because it's easy to find yourself in negative thought patterns, and then those thought patterns just kind of stack on themselves. So. And it's like you don't really know like it's a pattern, right? Until until you do realize, and you're like, where am I now? Like I just feel like I'm. Yes, you know, for most people, I mean, I don't want to say for most people, for me, it took, um, it took coming to a realization that um, uh, how I was was affecting not just myself, but my family, that it was something I thought was hidden inside of me, and it, it wasn't, it was, it was, they more, could tell, they could tell, it was affecting my, it was affecting me as a father, husband, a teacher, um, I mean, it just does. It, it, it's something that's constantly there. The way I try to describe it to my students and, and to, to people, um, Stranger Things. I don't know if you've seen Stranger Things. It's like being in the upside down world, and you're 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 there, and you can hear your family, and you can hear your friends, and you you feel like you're a part of a group, but you're but you're not. Mm. You feel alone, and then you just feel trapped, and you want desperately to get out of it and be with everybody, but you can't, and you just kind of feel trapped within um and it's just that that feeling that basically for me was that i looked at i'm not doing and haven't accomplished in my life what i thought i would so I'm, I, there must be something wrong with me and that inner monologue kicks in that you're a failure or you're not good or look at all your friends they're doing this they're doing that and, and you're still here and, you know so those those things really weighed into and then you find out oh you have a special needs child and care and, and the, the work that goes into that on top of that so there's that constant um, being tired being drained uh, and then we, we tend not to take care of ourselves mm. so for me it, the easy way was you know I wasn't into drugs and alcohol but I, I would sit down with a bag of Kit Kats and finish <laughs> a whole bag in the evening and you start doing that and um, eating bad and, and using food to kind of Right. You know, stuff feelings down, and then you end up uh, in a bad in a bad place. So. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I kind of. Wait. So, how? What about your wife? Um, through all that, she was facing some of her own struggles. Um, you know, just with work and with uh, being a being a working mom, and and having a special needs child too. Uh, she was seeing some of the, the frustration and, and, and me uh, as well, and so it was it was it was difficult for her. Um, 
I, I think that she she knew something was wrong and she was encouraging me to get help but wasn't exactly sure you know how and, and I think a lot of us we came from backgrounds where from Christian backgrounds where we, we really didn't talk about this mm-hmm. much um, we came from Christian backgrounds where um, if you had these kind of problems there was something spiritually wrong with you mm-hmm. and and you know, and so it was one of those things where you, you kind of don't want to say, hey, this is how I, I'm feeling. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm, I'm dealing with um, these astronomical issues. Like and, life and death. Yeah. And um, I'm, I, because for me, this, this impulse to just take my own life, that, that thought, that's the answer to my problems. I mean, that goes all the way back to, you know, junior high True. in me. Um, and, and that becomes a pattern of thinking. That you know, life gets too bad. That's my escape. You know, it's kind of like um, a video game. You know, you I, I used to play video games where you had to progress through the video game and you had to make choices. And sometimes you could find yourself stuck because you didn't do something right, and so you can't really complete the game. And so, what would you do? You'd hit reset or power and erase and delete and start over. And that's kind of the way I would always think of it. Like, oh, I can just hit the reset button just hit the power button but that's not the way it is you know mm-hmm. so um, coming to a realization that uh, that I, I do matter my 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 family my students um, need you yeah they need a dad yeah and they need me and then also knowing that I'm not the only one who's struggling with these things that there's other people who are and who are facing things and so um, it, it kind of helps you not feel alone Right. Dang. Okay. Um. Well. Well, that's interesting. I guess. Um. I'll kind of change the subject a little bit. Okay. Did you see um the Last Jedi? Yes. This is a very mu- much a subject change, but um, you remember the scene where um. Uh, like they're burning the books, like they're burning like the Jedi spiritual books. Um, and like Yoda's just like sitting there giggling and he's, and like, he's like supposed to be the wisest one. Right. Yeah. Um, I don't know. I just, I'm not, um, like obviously I'm not advocating that we should not, or that we should like, that you should just burn the Bible. Right. Like that's, don't do that. But, um, it's almost like, so like a lot, I've been reading a lot of the new Testament lately. Mm -hmm. Um, and a lot of it's like common sense kind of right right like it's just kind of paul i mean from from what i've read so far not all of it right but um it's just paul a lot of paul just saying like do this don't do this mm-hmm. and it's kind of like you already know that um i don't know i just saw i see like the similarity between the two and it's like like we need the Bible, right? Um, but like, I guess when we're all like, when this earth passes away, we're all in heaven. Like, we're not gonna need the Bible, right? Well, you have to. We have to ask the question: What is the point of the Bible? Is the point of the Bible to tell us how to live? Is 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 Paul trying to give? And I'm not denying that Paul's giving practical applications. To the Christian life, but he does that, but he does that in light of this understanding or this theory that there is this person Jesus who is God in the flesh, who um, is the Savior, and coming to saving faith in Him should change the way you have every other human relationship, and this is what it looks like. So. This is what coming to Christ looks like, so this is how it should impact your marriage, your work relationships, your friendships, your interactions with everyone else, even situations you might find yourself in. So what you're, what you're reading in the New Testament when you, when you make those statements, it's common sense. Well, well for one, for, for a lot of the Christians who were reading it, you got to understand he had, a, he had a, an intended audience. They're struggling with what does it mean to be a Christian? They've grown up. A, uh, most of them, the early Christians, were Jewish. So they've grown up 
having a temple, uh, having priests, mm. having sacrifices, and all that's gone. Right. So how do we how do we live out this faith? What does that look like practically? So he gives a lot of times, especially Paul. His seems to be his his pattern is he gives this theory that not just theory, but the idea that the doctrine of salvation first. And then this is how living out the gospel looks like in these areas, if that makes any sense. Mm -hmm. So um, when you're reading through the New Testament, it, it's, it's challenging us to, A, one, understand that Jesus is the completion of this entire Bible. Because if you, I'm a firm believer of reading the Bible backwards, which means if you're going to read in Genesis, you've got to read it through the lens of the New Testament. That the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation is about Jesus, and that is the main point. Um, now, secondary points will be how you apply the Bible, but the main focus is him. So I I'll say for eternity, yeah, the Bible will still matter because it'll still be about him, if mm. that makes any sense. Okay. I guess, like, what I'm getting at is, like, is it, like, once you become a Christian and the Holy Spirit, you have the Holy Spirit, mm -hmm. like, is that enough to get by? Well, I think that there's there's a, you know, the scriptures talk about, I, don't know, I want to say that the Bible says he, he's given us all we need for life and godliness. Um, I believe in the, what we call the sufficiency of scripture, that the Bible is not uh, exhaustive. It doesn't tell us every last detail about God, but it tells us what we um, effectively and sufficiently need uh, for this life. Um Yes, the Holy Spirit is important, and I'm not trying to downplay the importance of the role of the Holy Spirit, but I'll argue that the Holy Spirit speaks to us through the Scripture, that it's the Scripture is the primary means by which the Holy Spirit communicates with us. And as we read the Bible more and more, God speaks to us more and more through it. It's the Holy Spirit talking to us. Um, if you notice when, in the Gospels where Jesus says, um, it's, it's actually better, Jesus tells his disciples, that I go, that I leave. So the Spirit will come. Because when I go, I'll send the Spirit to you. And that's better for you because He will bring to your mind remembrance of things that I have said. And we see that written in the Scriptures, the things that He said. He will bring to your mind these things. Um, he will guide. He will teach. He will instruct, instruct in righteousness. And so He does that primarily through uh, the Word of God. So when Paul was writing, we'll go back to Paul, when Paul was writing Romans, right? The Holy Spirit is speaking through Paul effectively, sufficiently, um, what we need for life and godliness. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I mean, don't. I hope you don't think I'm like this kid that's like... No, no. Burnt, like, no. Good question. Good question. Okay. Um, yeah. Hmm. What else you want to talk about? I mean, I just know that you've read the, I mean, I'm assuming you've read the Bible so much. So it's like, I really just want to mm -hmm. okay. extract uh, information, wisdom, hopefully. Um, where'd you get that? This? The Ark. Uh, one of my students got it for me years ago. Um, and inside it, it's funny. There is a the copy of or a little two tablets that are supposed to be the Ten Commandments. There's the pot of manna, and then there's Aaron's staff that Bud in. Grab it. <laughs> Where they get it? from a different country? Uh, I don't remember. It's been years. <laughs> um, Did you have that like? I want to say yeah. Five I used to years have it ago. Sitting up here. Okay. Yeah, it's been. Oh, it's at least ten years. It's been here. I used to sometimes I'll, I'll have students leave notes inside of it. <laughs> For you? I've had just whatever. Yeah. Hi, Mr. Zerman. Ha ha ha. You know, things like that. Um, just because it's there. So how are things here? Like I know you've, it seems like your perspective is getting like improving, but here how. You mean as in the school? School. Um, it, it, you know, it, COVID has made it in an unusual last two years. You know, mm. this school year being half of my students online and half of them 
in class. Really? Yeah. Half of the kids class. don't show up? About, I mean, at different times, yeah. It's optional? No. Well, <laughs> it's supposed to be they have to come, like, they have to let us know in advance that they're going to be online. Like, every day, every week, the whole year? Yeah, like, they need to know, let us, it was originally supposed to be on a month-to-month basis. Uh, they would let us know, and now that's kind of, I don't know if that's just not being um, emphasized. Uh, I just know I'm having a lot of students moving back and forth. And it, 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 that creates a challenge. Mm-hmm. Um, so do you have to do, are you great. just recording your lectures? Um, and so I do it video broadcast. Um, so I use my phone to broadcast over Google Classroom, like a Google Meet. And they log in to Google Classroom. And they basically sit in class with their laptop like that, the ones at home, and they follow along my lesson uh, as I teach. And then um, they take the quizzes and tests all digitally. I send them, you know, upload them through Google Classroom. So how much more work is it for you? A lot. Really? Yeah. <laughs> it's a lot. It, and it's not just me. It's, it's, and it's not just teachers here. It's, uh, it's, I've got friends that teach in public school, and they're saying the same thing. It's not sustainable. Um, it, it, for a long a long term model um, would be having a, um, a designated online like I wouldn't mind creating content and letting someone else have to do the grading and the and the paperwork <laughs> and I wouldn't even mind them using my class lectures but it's the it's the online paperwork it's the it's the kids thinking that we're Amazon and so I get I get emails at eight o'clock at night on a Friday hey I turned this in can you update my grade. <laughs> Uh, no. <laughs> what are you doing on a Friday night normally at 8 right. o'clock? You Eating Kit Kats, man. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not doing that. So um, I, I tell them I got, I got office hours between 8 and 3, and, you, and that's when I get that stuff done. So, mm-hmm. uh, so that's been a challenge. Um, and it's weird. I would say even having kids in class with masks on. Yeah. Uh, it's, yeah. it's weird. That and... What has really changed? Well, I don't know. Were you here when we started using devices in the classroom? Mm-hmm. That, to me, I would have said before COVID, that's the biggest challenge. Because now, now kids, it's so easy for them. And it's to, to sit there at their desk and to be on YouTube watching something or, and have a little ear pod in and you can't see, mm-hmm. you know. And um, have the grades distracted by so much. God, have the grades declined overall? No, yes. Um, hard to say, hard to say. I think, I think kids have a good way of figuring out the system. They figure out what they need to know. And I I don't think they appreciate that. I don't know if you remember being in my class. I feel like there's, there's stuff that's on the notes that we talk about that's important, but then there's conversations we have that they are tangent off of those notes. Mm -hmm where we talk about things that, you know, can be very impactful. And so when that's not happening, when you've got kids who are just spacing out and they're on YouTube doing something else, you know, there was a lot of times where you, you, you remember, hey, that class had an impact on me. It wasn't because of something that was mm-hmm. in the notes. It was something because somebody asked a question and it got me thinking and I never really thought about that. And, and that's where that, that magic happens, that educational right. magic where you start learning. So I worry about that. I worry about the distraction of kids in the classroom with their devices and things of that nature. Would you say the distraction's gotten worse since it started? Or is it just... Oh, yeah. Well, it's now it's... I think because kids are using their computers so much, they're getting good at multitasking. Oh, for sure. They're getting good at split screen. Oh, we were good at it five years ago. Trevor. True, but, I, but things have gotten better. Easier. And um, there's all these add-ons that they can do, and you know, apps that they can use, and um, that make things uh, easier. I think the 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 lazy approach. I see. <laughs> I'll see kids on some of my quizzes. They will Google answers, and I can tell it's from Google because a, it's not how my notes would have said it. It's not how I would have defined it. And then when I type it into Google, it's like the first thing that pops <laughs> up. And I'm just like. So you think that's like, so they studied that or they? Oh, no, they cheated. Definitely cheated. Definitely caught. caught You're talking about like a, like a digital quiz or test? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Oh, I, 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 kids have no qualms cheating in Bible class. Mm-hmm. I've learned that over the years. 
bit ironic, right? Mm -hmm. Yep. But so you did you graduate from Bob Jones? Yes, uh, in 1999. Bachelor's degree. Yep. Okay. And so, what did you? When did um? And so it sounds like your childhood. I mean, I remember you telling some stories, but was it kind of was it rough? Was it? I came from a divorced home. My parents divorced when um, I was 15. Um, I was tall, skinny, bony kid, geeky. Um, got picked on <laughs> quite a bit. Um, I went to public school. Um, there were some really rough years in there uh, with, with what went on with my parents. My parents' divorce was ugly. It really was ugly. Only child, right? Uh, no, I have a sister. That's right. I have a sister. Um, she's three years older. Um, and so there was a lot of stuff that went on with that. Um, How's she today? My sister, she's like, she's fine. She's got four kids. You know, um, Her and I aren't super close. Um, just family stuff. So, yeah. Okay. Um, so like you're not, but are both your parents alive? Yep. Mom and my dad, mom and dad live about 20 minutes away from each other. That's funny. They're both in West Virginia still. Do they get along? Um, if they don't talk to each other. <laughs> you see them at like. Yeah, I go up there. Like my dad and I are close now. We uh -huh. worked for a while. Um. And my dad and I, I think through Benjamin, uh, his birth, wow. dad and I had a long heart-to-heart -heart talk. And, um, you know, we, we, we agreed that the past is not something that we want to revisit mm. and go back through. And um, I love him and I want him in my life. It's important, I, I feel. Uh, so him and I are close. I go up there every summer. We spend about a week up there with my dad. And then we go up for Thanksgiving. Spent about a week there at Thanksgiving, too. Uh, and so I'll see my mom when I go up there um, for Thanksgiving. And for, for but you're just kind of giving her like a more of a quick visit? And you're yeah, spending time with your dad? Yeah, I spend more time with my dad. My mom, my mom, um, it's hard to spend a lot of time with. Uh, <laughs> she is um, just from a physical standpoint, you know, just it, not able to move around real well. Um, and then I go and I visit her for a little bit and we talk. Is she sick or something? Um, she had room, real bad rheumatoid arthritis, arthritis in all her joints. She got a lot of health problems. So, Dang. so how old are they? Um, both gonna be uh, mom's turning seventy, dad's gonna be sixty nine. And that was kind of the impetus too. Looking, looking at my life, seeing myself at their age, knowing I have a special needs child, I did not want to be my parents. Both of them have type two diabetes, heart problems. Mm -hmm. Mom's in much worse shape than dad, but um, I, I just knew I needed to make changes hmm. you know, if I wanted to be have quality of life moving forward too. And I felt like I did that, and, and, and I think I staved off type two diabetes. Um, Staving off, yeah, like yeah. But I'm saying like it's right. You got to keep doing it. Yeah, right? yeah, oh, yeah. And I've been. I like. Um, I don't eat junk food. Like denied those real quick. Yeah, like I. I this is crystal light. It's got, you know, a little bit of caffeine in it, but mainly um, just flavoring for water. And I drink that. Um, I'm, I'm pretty regimented. Every morning I have about five scrambled eggs, turkey bacon, uh, 45 calorie whole grain toast. Then I'll have a, um, a healthy choice lunch. I'll snack on uh, yogurt through the day. And then when I get home on workout days, I'll take protein before and then protein after. And then I, I'll grill out like chicken, salmon, um, and I, I try to stay right around 2,500 calories. And I, I've got my macros the way I want them. And, uh, I don't go over, and I, st I try to stay. And then after I, d I do my workout, I do high-intensity interval training with it after I do my weights. And then in the So evening, you're moving oh yeah, when you work out? Evening, and then in the evening, I do, uh, my wife and I walk about three miles, kind of decompress the day. So yeah, no, it's been a it's been a lifestyle change. Yeah, uh, I started out with just a, a, a weight bench and two dumbbells, and now if you came to my house, you'd see I've got a, a 
power cage. Uh, I've got dumbbells that range from five pounds all the way up to 50. I've got weight plates, bench press bars, bench bands. Bands were a big, mm. um, big, big investment. Also, um, a pulley system for the power cage. It's been good. And a lot of landmine attachment, all those kind of things. Landmine? Yeah, it's a little thing, a little attachment you put down at the bottom of the power cage, and then you put your, you slide your bar into it. It's like a lever, so you can do um, oh. some other uh, multi joint exercises with it. So you're not going to any gyms. You're just no. I do it from home because. Um, my wife works out in the morning at, at, at uh, Bodyplex. She does a class. I do it at home because A, Benjamin works out with me, and he started seeing the changes in me, and he wanted that. And then Hannah. It's, it makes it easier for me to watch her because I couldn't go um, right. because of my wife's job. It would be too hard to get in and out of the gym. So she stays – like she runs around while we work out. <laughs> <laughs> we check on her in between our sets. <laughs> so how old is Hannah? She's nine. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. And she's nonverbal autistic. Her des- what she, the official, what she has is called IDIC15 or IDU15, her chromosome. She's got a 15 chromosome and she's got a duplication. It acts like an extra chromosome. So it creates all um, uh, developmental delay, uh, verbal delay, uh, autism. Hypotonia, which is underdeveloped core muscle. She's very, you know, she bends, very flexible. flexible. Um, and then um, we have to watch for seizure activity as well. Seizure? Yeah. She's had a couple episodes? Has not. Not that we've witnessed and not, you know, and, and hopefully she won't. But a lot of them do. Wow. You said it's I, what is it? IDIC15. The older designation is I do fifteen. Did you um? Did you guys know when she was still in the womb? No, we didn't find out until about six months after she was born. We could tell something was wrong. Wow. She wasn't hitting benchmarks like Benjamin. She wasn't turning her head, and so the back of her head was getting misshaped from being laid from laying on her back. So we took her to a spe- we, we went to our pediatrician who said who listened and said, "Okay, you need to go to genetic testing." We did a genetic test that probably most people wouldn't do because it costs like five grand to do it. But we had the to test. Do it. Yes, a one-time test. It's a blood test, and they check for everything. It's five grand. Well, it was at the time, and so we said we'll put on a credit card and we'll figure out how to pay for it because well, it's your kid. Right. And um, they came back and it had found the uh, the genetic the duplication. They showed it to us, and then there was a company called, I believe it was called Money Engine, that wanted to have the, the genetic material to, to test, to use, to research, for the do research on her condition. They wanted her blood? Her, that, that, yeah. And they said if we give it to them, they would pay up to $500, clearly. <laughs> right. so, and so we ended up only having to pay 500 bucks. Oh, they said you only have to, have to pay 500 bucks. Yeah, they'll pay the other 4500 Okay. I guess that kind of worked out. Right? Yeah. Wow. So, yeah, and that began our journey to where we are now. So. Is it? Uh, I mean, it's just. Oh yeah, there's good days. But imagine having having someone the size of a, a, a nine year old, who Hannah, um, you have to repeatedly say, "No, don't climb that. No, don't climb that. No, you're gonna burn yourself." Um, have her want ask for cereal and then go. And you can't, why did you do that? There's no, she doesn't mm. comprehend. Um, picking up the same mess that she's made on the floor constantly, constantly, constantly. I mean, it's just, it's a constant thing. Yeah. Well, and that's every day. Yeah. There is no, and there is no, I don't feel like dealing with it today. Right. It's, it's a, or in the middle of the night, like last night, she woke up like at three and was crying because her iPad wasn't working. Because she can manipulate the iPad. So we it was dead. So we have two iPads, one that stays on charge and one <laughs> and we just switch them in and out. So, uh, <laughs> yeah. On rotation. Yep. Wow. So her iPad isn't like special for her at all? She's an iPad. She's an iPad. Does she have like special apps or anything? Uh there's apps that we have on it for her that she likes to go to. She loves YouTube kids. There's all these little videos that she finds. And what is so funny is she finds the most annoying ones, like baby crying. 
<laughs> and she watches it over and over and over and over again. Just a video of a baby crying? Yes. <laughs> man. Yeah, man, I bet that's got to be a... You know, it's amazing. It's got its challenges, but I love her so much. I She's a daddy's girl, so I'm kind of her favorite. I mean, there's, there's no mystery in my house. She comes to me. She'll come and climb and grab onto my neck, and she'll cuddle up with me. Like, she won't live with anybody else. And um, Every day when I go pick her up from school, like, that's why I got to leave it at L after 2, because I go pick her up. Uh, she'll, she comes out to the class, big old smile, and hugs me, and so she's not able to say she loves me, but she shows in the little things that she does. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, a lot of things she does are just pull your hair out, just repetitive. She likes to climb. She climbs up and she gets on top of bookshelves and we're afraid she's going to fall. Or she climbs up on top of the refrigerator. Uh, it's, it's amazing how much she can climb and get into. <laughs> and she seems to hurt herself constantly. Like She crushed her thumb in a car door. And it, her nail filled up with blood. So she was in pain, so I take her to the urgent care. And they look at me and they said, the only way to fix that is we got to drill a hole in her nail. They pull out this thing, it looks like a pen. Seriously. They break the cap off. It's super hot. They stick it on her nail, and it sears right through her nail. And they poke two little holes. And when they did the first one, blood went shooting up in the air, squirting out. I know. And then she stopped crying. Wow. Like she, when it started going? When it, when the blood shot out, she just stopped crying. Oh, wow. Because the pressure was released. Mm. It was crazy. Wow. I'd never seen anything like that. They're like, can we film this so we can show people how to do this procedure? And I was like, okay. <laughs> so wait, so that was like an untested thing? or like a I don't know. It wasn't untested. It's just that they, I guess they have this video file for people who, are, you know, for nurses and doctors that to show them how it went yeah this is how you do this okay i mean they pulled their cell phone just like and just recorded it. it yeah well did the blood like hit the ceiling it didn't hit that high i mean it was oh, just like it's, okay. it squirted up though <laughs> wow i was like whoa <laughs> she quit crying i mean as soon as it, they did that she was like the pressure was released and she was good because she doesn't you know Hannah doesn't, is it, she's aware, but she's not aware. Does that make sense? Like, she doesn't, she's in the moment. So there is no, this is going to hurt. Because she, you could say that term, she will. She doesn't know. So when she feels it, she lets you know. And when it's done, she stops because she doesn't know mm -hmm. that. She's not trying to act. She's not all. trying to be active. It's not fake with her. And she's got a high pain tolerance, too. Very high pain. That's good, I guess. No, that's also not good. Because <laughs> then we don't know sometimes. Oh, she can't tell us. Right. So. Hmm. Man. Dang. You just keep going every day, right? Yeah. Man. <sighs> Dang. Yeah, I should have came. Oh, that was the only question I had for you. Was the Go ahead. Last Jedi thing. That's all. Is that all you want to talk about, or do you want to talk about something else? I mean, no. I'm. I'm gonna. We got twelve minutes, right? What's um, on your mind? What do you want to talk about? I'm gonna open the book. Hmm. There's a lot of things on my mind. Um, what would be interest to you and the people who listen to this? Um. Um, I don't know. I I I, uh, I will say, so I like grew up in the church, right? Grew up at Berean, okay. grew up here. Um, but I think I may have gotten saved like in the last like two months. Okay. Oh, regardless, like, um, like whether I was got saved when I was like five or six, or whether it happened like two months ago. Um, like I know, like I've been taught all this stuff, right? Okay. But it's like, it just, it, it's a lot more uh, real, you know, like in the last couple months, it's like, I've actually been praying and it's like, man, prayer is just something, right? Yeah. Like, um, 
And it, another thing that's getting me is um, just like the idea of the Holy Spirit being in us, right? It's like, I don't know, it's kind of a lot. Of th I mean, I don't know. It's just like, and our body is a temple. It's like, which is why there is no temple, because we are the temple. If you go back into the Old Testament, you see the temple was that building that the the go that the Holy Spirit or God did dwell in, and you could see the, the the smoke fill the temple, and they knew the presence of God was there because the smoke was there. And, and um, Paul makes the point in Corinthians that we become that temple that that, that, that the Spirit of God fills us in that way. Yeah, it's I mean. It is a lot. I mean, it's crazy to think about. The Holy Spirit is in you. And it's like, we're not worthy of that, right? Um, okay, so let me ask you. So the Old Testament, I haven't dove too deep. Um, like, I, won't, I, I read Genesis and Exodus. That's it so far. Um, um, do you have any... Anything to say about the Old Testament? Like I said, this is a broad question, man. I'm sorry. But um, just because I haven't read that much of it. Um, I would say understand that what you're reading in the Old Testament, that the whole of the Bible was centered on Jesus. And when you're reading the Old Testament, it's probably good that you start read through the New Testament first. And then when you go back into the Old Testament, I would, I would, I would say you have to understand that the New Testament is the fulfillment of the Old. And so keeping that in mind, going back and reading the Old Testament, you're going to see Christ in that Old Testament in type and shadow and prophecy. And even the narrative, the, you got to think that the whole story, it's really this. And one of the one of the things I try to get across to my students is that the Bible is telling one grand narrative. Like we're talking about Star Wars, right? If you really want to understand the, 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 the narrative, the big story of Star Wars, where would you start? New Hope. New Hope. Okay. You can start with New Hope, episode four, right? But would you want to start Phantom Menace? Well, no, you could. And that's not a bad place to start. You could start at four, watch four, five, and six, right? You would. And that way, it kind of protects you. It keeps you the, like, the whole mystery, the Darth Vader mystery, and who he is, and finding out the big reveal, right? You, st you would get all that impact. And then what would you do? Phantom Menace. Go back to one. Watch one, two, and three. So it's like the New Testament, Old Testament kind of idea. And then you go seven, eight, nine, right? So regardless of how you feel about that, you know, I don't want to get into all that because everybody's got different opinions of how they feel about the films. To understand the overall story, you could start with one and watch one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You could do it that way, and you would get the you would you would get the over, but you're going to miss the point. Hmm. So starting it. I would argue, starting in the New Testament now, going there and then going back to the Old, then you begin to see Christ mm -hmm. in, in, in the Old Testament and how it connects together. Yeah. So, I don't know if that helps. Oh, no, for sure. I mean, yeah, it makes total sense. Um, I'm trying to think of a good little book. And it might help you. Uh... keep it i got another copy thank you um, and it's a great little book it'll it'll walk you through um just reading through the bible understanding the bigger picture how it fits together the different uh sections of it um and it'll it'll it's a it's a great little companion it, it, all of the scholars in it i would highly recommend they're all really good uh and each chapter is kind of short it's not very it's not it's not it's not a long involved reading but it kind of gives you a good synopsis and kind of get helps you connect it all together okay so i've actually thought about using that as a textbook really yeah well thank you i appreciate you giving this to me yeah so. um so was it it was one it was some council that decided um that the new testament was going to be the new testament right no no that's a misconception um you're talking about the council of nicaea in 325 the Council of Nicaea of 325 was brought together mainly to settle uh, an issue between the Arians and the, uh, the which is the follower of Arius, and what we would the biblical teaching on the deity of Christ, um, and so that was the main thrust of the Council of Nicaea 325. 
Arius was going around teaching that Jesus wasn't God the Son in the way in which we think of it. They were he was teaching that God was an emit that Jesus was an emanation, like light that comes from the sun. The light isn't the sun, it just comes from the sun. So he was saying that Jesus comes from the Father, but he's not ontologically the same as the Father. And there was a small faction who taught that, and it was becoming a problem. And so at the Council of Nicaea, they got together to discuss, and this is back at a time when you have to understand that um, there were overseers over each area of, 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 a, of a province or location. And that overseer decided if you could come in and teach, you had to come and get approval by him, right? And make sure, and you had to basically pass kind of a test that you understood Christian theology. Well, there, Arius was going around teaching. He wasn't an overseer. He was just a teacher. He was going around teaching these things and it was getting some traction. Okay. Okay. And so they had a group get together of all these overseers at the Council of Nicaea. And that was the main issue that they were settling was this issue on the deity of Christ. And unanimously, the council came back and said, look, um, Arius is wrong here. Uh, and only two, I wanna say there was like 135 bishops there and like two sided with Arius and the rest all were like, no, Jesus is God, the son ontologically. There was a couple other things at the Council of Nicaea. They talked about like, when they should celebrate Easter, should they follow the Eastern or Western tradition? And Athanasius was there, and Athanasius has in his notes a listing out of the uh, 27 books of the New Testament. But by the time we get to the Council of Nicaea, and it's not until the Council of Constantinople, when I want to say 390, that they say that we, the church, recognize these books as the New Testament books. Um, but the church already was reading them, circulating them, and basically is what happened was it wasn't that they said, we say this is the New Testament. They said, we recognize that these books are the Word of God, that they passed what's called the, 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 the test for standard, the, the, the canon, that they meet up with the standard of the Old Testament. Hmm. Hmm. Wow. So the church didn't pick it, it was, it'd be like this. Um, we're sitting up in the stands and we're watching a basketball game. And LeBron's out there playing a bet against a bunch of middle school kids. Mm. And we knew nothing about who any of these kids were. And we knew nothing about LeBron. How long would it take for us to figure out LeBron is the best player out there? We even have to discuss it. Mm -mm. It would be self-attesting, wouldn't it? It would be obvious. Mm. And that's what they said. They said, these books, it's obvious that these books are scripture. Mm. It's self-attesting. They, they bear mm. the same uh, standard that the Old Testament does. Wow. So they didn't pick it. They just were, it'd be like saying, it's, I think um, Packer has the quote. He says, it's like saying Isaac Newton uh, invented gravity. No, he didn't invent gravity. He what? It discovered was, it. They it was already there. He was already there. They discovered that this is the New Testament. They didn't make it the New Testament, if that makes any sense. Wow. Wow. Okay. Yeah. I believe it was the cool. Council of Constantinople in 395. I don't have to Google it, but I think it's that. Yeah, because it's like, um, hmm. so do you think Paul, I mean, no one knows, right? But it's like, so Paul wrote three letters to the, Cor the church in Corinth, right? Well, there's two that we have, and I would say the third one is summed up in 2 Corinthians. Okay. That he, he talks about another letter, and I'm of the opinion that that letter he's talking about is summed up in 2 Corinthians. So that's okay. why there isn't one that's... A third Corinthians. Okay. Okay. So do you think Paul knew what he was doing when he was writing these letters? Yes. And I believe if you look at, um, the apostles seem to indicate each other that they recognized what they were writing with scripture. Peter talks about um, the, the writings of Paul and he says some men twist his writings like they do other scripture. 
And the word he uses there for other is not other of a different kind. It's other of the same kind. And he uses the word graphe, which is the New Testament way for identifying the Old Testament as scripture. So basically wow. what Peter is saying there is that he twists, they twist other scriptures. Um, and then you have Paul in one of his passages, and I can't remember the reference right off the top of my head. But he, he mentions a verse in Luke, and then he quotes something in the Old Testament. He mentions a verse in Luke, and he quotes something in the Old Testament, and he calls them both scripture. So it's, it's like they recognize what they were doing was scripture. Hmm. Wow. Yeah. That's pretty powerful. I was thinking about that yesterday. Like, does Paul, like, did Paul know what he was doing? But so I guess they were just so like locked in with the, the Holy Spirit within them that they were like, well, um, I want to say, is it second Peter three? I should know this off the top of my head, but Second Peter three, three fifteen. Um, no, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Second Peter. Second Peter one. Uh, 2 Peter 1, verse 20, Knowing this, first of all, that no prophecy of Scripture comes from anyone's own interpretation. For no prophecy was ever produced by the will of man, but men spoke from God as they were carried along. That word there in the Greek, by the Holy Spirit. They were carried along by the Holy Spirit. That word there in Greek has the picture of a ship that's lost its rudder. And that rudder is that piece that guides it. And it's now at the mercy of the, of the current. So... Mm. These, these authors of Scripture are being carried along by the Holy Spirit as they are writing. Wow. That's pretty awesome. All right, it's 201. You got to go? Um, here in a minute. I think the bell rings at 210. Oh, okay. Yeah, because I literally like, wow, that's pretty awesome. Because it's like, because, um, yeah, I noticed Paul like references uh, Old Testament Scripture and stuff like that. So you can tell like these guys were like really reading the Old Testament. Yeah. Um, but then it's like they're creating this New Testament. Um, so yeah, that's I'm glad that's cool to hear you say that that they did know what they were doing. Because a part of me thought like, was he just writing a letter to Corinth, and they just thought it was so good that we should just that everyone should read it, you know? Or well, that, and and there's some of the letters we recognize that they were what we call encyclical, like Colossians was a letter that that the church at Colossae took read. And then was supposed to send it on, and they were supposed to make a copy of it and send it on to the next church. Oh. Yeah. Wow. And it would circle wow. amongst the churches in that area. Yeah. Dang. Yeah, I got I've been working, like, I've been reading a lot, but I mean, like, I don't want to make myself sound mm -mm. better than I am, you know? But, um, like, in the last, like, week, I've knocked out. Both Corinthians, uh, and I mean, on the other night I just went like, doo -doo 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 -doo, I knocked out, um, what's after Corinthians? First, second Corinthians, if, uh, Galatians. Galatians, Ephesians, it's like the next couple are pretty Galatians, short, right? Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians. Okay, I think, I'm in the middle of Philippians right now. Okay. But a couple of those books, like after the first and second Corinthians, it's just like six chapters, um, but yeah, I also know I should be like not just re – well, the thing is, as I'm going through the first time, like actually reading the Bible, it's like I just want to read it more like a book just so I'm actually – There's nothing wrong with that. And, and I would think a good way to do it is to read through – like do what you're doing and finish and read through the New Testament. And then just read through the Old Testament. And then just to get a whole sense of the whole. Mm -hmm. And then go back and start and studying study. – Books. Breaking it down, really trying to... Yes, that's what I would do. I, I think so many people never... And what happens is, here's the problem. We have not done the mental work, the discipline of reading. Like, we want to read for pleasure. And so, there are, I mean, there are sections of the Bible that are hard to read through because they, they, they don't make sense to us and our sensibilities because they're not familiar to us. So... You know, it's hard to read through Leviticus because it's so foreign to us. And so since we're not used to doing the mental work of 
being disciplined and reading through something, people, most people just give up. Like they get through Genesis because it's a narrative and they get about halfway through Exodus and then like, oh, it switches over to the, the building of the temple mm. and or the tabernacle and it's like, oh, this is just grueling. And then by the time they get into uh, Leviticus, they're just like, okay, I can't do this anymore. Right. You know? And then Numbers that starts out with just all that and they're just like, okay, I'm done. And they give up and they abandon and they run the Psalms or they run the Proverbs. And they never get a full sense of the scope hmm. and, and the narrative structure of what's going on. There's a lot of books in the Old Testament, right? 66? Yes. Yeah. There's 66 in the whole Bible. Oh, okay. 39 in the Old. Okay. Um, and so, but they never read it through, and so they never they never grasp right. the, the, the vastness of what's there. And then oftentimes when I have kids read, like, Judges and stuff, they're like, I never believed that that stuff was in the Hmm. You know, there are some really gruesome stories that are in the Bible, and they don't know how to, how, they don't know what to do with it because they've never sat back and read through it, uh, and they don't understand it. Because God doesn't hide. Hmm. He doesn't hide the mistakes of people. He doesn't hide the brokenness. He doesn't hide what he's done. It's there on display. Yeah, I mean, so who's, who's um doesn't have a sin recorded in the Bible? It's just Jesus and Joseph, right? Um, nothing sinful that we can say per se, yes. Um, Daniel's another one. I don't think that there's anything sinful we can say per oh, se, okay. but we would say that Joseph and Daniel were sinners. Right. Um, a lot of people don't read through the book of Job and don't understand that Job gets to the point where he, and I, I really sympathize with the later parts of Job, where he's like, God, you've been a bully. You've beat mm-hmm. me up. I mean, you've assaulted me. I didn't do anything. You brought this into my life. He demands, God, you show up. I want to I wanna mm. talk to you. Wow. <laughs> People don't understand. That's what Job is saying. Then God shows up and it's a tornado. And Job's like, um, okay, I was out of my mind. <laughs> <laughs> like, I said things I shouldn't have said. I'm sorry. And God's like, no, you called this. Let's do this. Mm. Wait, so what happens after that? Well, basically, Job wants to know why. And God basically tells Job, I'm God. I don't have to tell you why. Hmm. Um, I have my reasons, and you have to be okay with that. And that's a hard thing to come to, because I, I re- coming kind of dub- circling back to this my story. For me, I wanted to know why. Hmm. I felt like if I knew why, I could make sense of it. And then I got to a point where I was like, "But you know, there's there's no answer that I'm going to get that's going to." Fulfill you? No, it's it. I've got and I've got to trust that God knows what He's doing, and it's His universe. And I got to step back and say, okay, I've got to let go of this because it's weighing me down. It's tearing me apart. And it's already happening. Yeah. It's already happening. Yeah. And it's like it already happened. It's like what? There's nothing. The the why now becomes irrelevant, and now I need to learn hmm. how to move forward with this. So. Wow. Accepting your reality, right? Yeah. Yeah. Man. Man, man, man. All right, All you right. got to go. You got to wrap it up. Yeah. All right. I mean, we can wrap it up. I mean, that's it. Okay. I, I hope, hope that's helpful. People <laughs> get it. Have fun editing. <laughs> Wait, what did you say? To have fun editing. <laughs>